When I say shoujo, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Pretty boys? Sparkles? Roses? Magical girls? There's a lot of stereotypical things that you'll think about first, but what if I told you that there was more to shoujo than that? Across the world, the very word shoujo is often misunderstood. Shoujo translates to young woman or maiden in Japanese, and usually refers to girls between the ages of 7 and 18. And although many people think of it as a genre, it refers to a target demographic that aims to appeal to young girls. So, who started the trend? Believe it or not, but the first author to pen a shoujo series was a man. Two series can be traced back as the origins. Sally the Witch and The Secrets of Akko-chan. Sally the Witch was a manga by Mitsuteru Yokoyama that was run in the magazine Ribbon, one of the most renowned shoujo magazines in Japan that has a target demographic of girls roughly 8 to 14. It spawned two anime that ran from December 5th, 1966 to September 23rd, 1991. The story is about Princess Sally, a witch of the Magic Kingdom, who wishes to travel to the mortal realm. After helping two skirl girls, Yoshiko Hanamura and Sumine Kasugano, she decides to stay on Earth while hiding her true identity and abilities. Along with being a shoujo, it also traces of being the base of the magical girl genre. Think about it. Without Sally the Witch, Sailor Moon probably wouldn't exist, or rather be as popular as it is today. However, that isn't to throw any shade at Takeuchi Naoko as she drew influence from Sally's simple transformation animation <laughs> and made each of the Sailor Senshi's transformations into full-blown transformation sequences. And although you can argue that the 1973 series Cutie Honey had the first transformation sequence, it's not a shoujo, so I'm going to have to cut that one out. In Japanese, The Secrets of Akko-chan, otherwise known as Himitsu no Akko-chan, was a manga by Fujio Akatsuka. It also ran in the magazine Ribbon, and it predates Sally the Witch as the first magical girl manga as it came out in 1962, while Akko-chan came out in 1966. However, since Sally was broadcasted first, it beat out Akko-chan by four years. Akatsuka was known as the pioneer of gag manga, as he was also the author behind Osumatsukun and Tensai Bakabo. Akko-chan also had three anime that ran from January 6, 1969 to February 28, 1999. It also spawned two films and one live-action movie that was released on September 1st, 2012. The story follows a young and selfish girl named Akko Kagami who adores her mother's mirror until it breaks. Unable to throw away the precious memento, she buries it in her backyard and meets a spirit who is touched that she decides to bury it rather than trash it. The spirit then gives Akko a magical mirror that she can use to cast enchantments that will turn her into anything she desires. This also traces back to how all magical girls have a mantra of some sort. However, shoujo isn't always known to be about magical girls, adolescent female protagonists, or even romance. Over the years, shoujo has developed a lot. They can include attractive characters that work as eye candy while the main heroine is plain, include an all-male cast, be about nothing at all, or even have uncomfortable or sensitive themes. Even series that seem cheerful and comedic at first may evolve into something with much darker and mature themes. A few series that draw these parallels are Fruits Basket, Banana Fish, and Natsume's Book of Friends. Fruits Basket uses comedy initially, such as Toto forgetting that she can't hug the opposite sex or they'll turn into zodiac animals, or her unbelievably naive way of thinking and doing things. As you continue to watch the series, however, you'll find that the Soma family all have complicated family issues, such as abandonment, guilt, abuse, and even manipulation. Banana Fish speaks on gang violence, the dangers of the mafia, murder, mental illness, and sex trafficking. But all these themes make it especially difficult to watch and captivate you all at the same time. Compared to both of those series, Natsume's Book of Friends is a light shining through the dark. It's mostly a chill, yet sometimes somber series about a young boy who wishes to make friends with yokai along with his pet cat, Madara. Sometimes, shoujo can be either extremely dark or super happy. It's all about the author behind the work. And sometimes, manga magazines simply put a series into a category once they see which audience is most popular with at the time. For example, Black Butler can both be regarded as a shonen and a shoujo series, just as Banana Fish was, as both of the series deal with dark themes yet have attractive characters. This traces back to Cutie Honey, which was made for a male demographic but also happens to be popular with females. Thinking this way, many series that are also considered shonen may be regarded as shoujo series. Some series may flip-flop between a shoujo and a shonen, enough so that even the publishers hesitate before putting the final label on anything. Shoujo and shonen also aren't defined by the person who makes the manga. The authors behind some of the best shonen manga are women. Full of the Alchemist, Demon Slayer, and A Silent Voice were all created by women. On the flip side, the first classic shoujo series ever made, Sally the Witch and The Secrets of Akko-chan, were created by men. In this case, gender doesn't really matter when creating anything. So, what defines shoujo? Is it the romance, characters, plot, or could it be all of them? What truly defines shoujo, and what connects all of these series, is the differences between them. At its core, all shoujo is is a target demographic. Nothing more, nothing less. Before anything, a label is just that. A label. As long as you try not to judge a series because of that, then who knows? You might find that shoujo series that you've been sleeping on to be way better than you thought.